There's another chip stock to check, Astera Labs after yesterday's IPO, and then another big debut today. Jeff, I'm going to start with you. What are these two IPOs? What could they tell us about the markets? Obviously, Astera had a big debut, up over 70%. Yeah, with a $9.5 billion market cap after that IPO, you really saw the appetite as we've seen the IPO market unthaw. We really saw it seize up after COVID. But yesterday was very telling that the AI appetite is there. But if you look at Astera Labs' biggest customers as they sell those connectivity chips into the cloud, you're talking about NVIDIA. You're talking about some of the big players. I think Reddit is a very different IPO today. So I don't see, despite the fact it's priced at the high end of the range at $34 for Reddit, I don't see that appetite matching the 72% pop here. Because it's just apples to potatoes. It's not the exact same thing. It's another social media platform versus anything AI. Anything AI is being gobbled up by investors, Frank. You know what? It's funny you say that, Jeff. And, and uh, Gunjan, I'm going to come over to you. A lot of people do see Reddit as an, as an AI play because of the data that you can get from a Reddit to train large language models. That's right. Well, I, I hope I'm wrong. <laughs> Sorry, Gunjan, go ahead. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, just zooming out a little bit, I think what the Reddit IPO, the Estera IPO tell me is that animal spirits are back in markets in a really, really big way. I mean, that pop in Estera yesterday, that reminded me of 2021 when the really? speculative fervor was sweeping through markets. You know, everything that was making its public debut was just soaring. Reddit priced at the high end of its range, so it's going to be really interesting to see how it trades today. And this, you know, these animal spirits, it's not just the IPO market, it's the bond market too. Right. Companies are rushing to the market to issue higher rated debt. We've seen more than $400 billion in issuance this year and investors are just eating it up. You know, they, there's a lot of money to put to work and we're seeing that in the IPO market, in the bond market, in the stock market. All right, Jeff, I'm going to come back over to you. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Lululemon. Earnings coming up uh, as, uh, later today. What's your view on Lululemon in particular and retail overall? Well, I think Lululemon has just had a tremendous year. When you talk about Lululemon, hand in hand, you have to talk about Nike. But Lululemon has been the stock to own on any metric, Frank, one year, three year, five year over Nike. But relatively speaking, it's only trading at a 32 times forward PE. And on a five year average, that's relatively inexpensive. So there is some value in this growth stock. And Lululemon, they continue to bring a quality product to the market. And as long as the consumer continues to show, show strength, I think Lululemon can continue to move higher. All right, so you mentioned Nike as well. Um, Nike under a bit of pressure recently. Um, some questions about competition from some upstarts, like an on cue. Also, what a lot of people call a lack of innovation. What's your view on Nike going forward? You know, I think if you look on a one year, you're seeing Lulu up about 60% and Nike dragging 16%. But I want to own Nike. I have a couple teenage kids here and everyone wants to wear Nike. So I think you're going to continue to see this laggard short term come back. But it has been rough sledding for the last couple of years for Nike. But I think it provides opportunity to buy here from an investment perspective, not essentially a trading perspective. Gunjan, what do you think about just the retail sector and also the strength of the consumer? I think that is the biggest question moving forward. You know, Wall Street has really high expectations for the consumer, for earnings, broadly speaking, this year. You know, that's in part what's driven this incredible rally in the stock market. But consumer spending got off to a little bit of a slow start at the start of this year. You know, Powell did not seem so concerned about that yesterday, but that is a giant question looming over markets. Was that some seasonal softness or is that the start of a bigger weakness to continue. So that's really one key thing to watch, right. you know, as we head into the next earnings season and look at some key economic data releases the next few weeks. You know, speaking of earnings season, our Jim Cramer on Mad Money yesterday, he was talking about just what to look for post earnings. I'm going to let him say it right now, but he's uh, talking a little bit about earnings season himself. We don't care about rate cuts. We care that the Fed's no longer the enemy. That's what this stock market's saying. But while the Fed is important, the specifics of when we get rate cuts or how many, that's become small potatoes. The important thing is that we can afford to think about earnings again, rather than worrying endlessly about the Fed's next move. All right, I'm going to go to both of you right now. We've got to hit this quick. Uh, Gunjan, you first. Do you think Jim Cramer has it right? We're past worrying about the Fed, and now it's all about earnings season. You know, we have seen a huge shift in markets over the past few months. For almost two years, it was this kind of game of chicken between the market and the Fed. You know, the market would say, we think we're getting six rate cuts, seven rate cuts. And the Fed was saying, uh-uh. Now the Fed is saying, we might get three rate cuts this year, and it does not seem to matter for investors. Okay. You know, I hear, I hear a lot less about the Fed these days from investors I'm chatting with. Jeff, giving you the last word. 
You know what? I, I love Jim Cramer, but I think he's got this one wrong. The Fed is driving the boat here. If you look at the sensitivity we had to the Fed's road ahead, we really saw last December that we were expecting 150 basis points in cuts. Now we only have three. The fact we still have three is going to be the momentum for people who are on the sideline in cash to come into the marketplace. So the Fed is absolutely in the position. I'm really surprised we're giving them so much credibility. Go back to fall of 2021, Frank. The Fed was talking about the Fed was talking about inflation being transitory. They were dead wrong. So at the end of the day, I don't trust the Fed.